What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Matt and Ryan here with the DFS 5-Pack. Uh, hopefully everybody had an awesome Thursday night at DFS, enjoyed the NBA action. Uh, I just have to go on my little soapbox rant for a couple seconds. So, like, obviously me and you, we got league pass. We get to watch NBA all night. I get to watch 80 games of LeBron if I want to. Obviously, I can watch the Greek Freak every single night. I'm still just perturbed by the Lakers versus Bucks game and just the ticky-tack fouls on LeBron and Giannis. National TV, we got the two best records in the NBA. I hate ticky tack falls on superstars in that game. I don't want to miss six minutes of Giannis in the third quarter. I don't want LeBron playing the whole fourth quarter with five fouls so he can't be aggressive on defense. He can't go to the lane as aggressively. And another point was like, both of those dudes should have fouled out after that. There was blatant fouls on both Giannis and LeBron, like after they both had five that should have gotten them out of the game. And then they held their whistles. Like, Hold the whistles earlier in the game on the ticky tack stuff. I get it if it's blatant, but on the ticky tack stuff, we want to watch the superstars in a big matchup like this. Yeah, man. We talked about this before, man, and it's worth bringing up. Like, imagine not only like we have league pass, and we do this for a living. So we watch a lot of NBA, but a lot of people don't have time, are working during that, et cetera, et cetera. This is a, a game they wanted to watch, a game that maybe people got tickets for as a Christmas gift or whatever, because it's one of the biggest games of the year. The Lakers only come to Milwaukee once. I mean, they talk and talk and talk about how it's an entertainment, you know, it's a business. Well, this is the, the mo potentially, you know, the most entertaining game of the year. Uh, you got to call it like a playoff game. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, man. Don't get superstar, superstar calls in a game like that where everybody's watching. All right, rant over. Let's talk about DFS. Sorry, I was a little bit fired up about that game last night because I was so excited for it and missing lots of, you know, Giannis minutes and missing like, you're not missing LeBron because he played with five fouls, but, like, you can't be the same guy. Anyways, I'm done. Sorry about that. Let's talk about DFS. Uh, Overlay Fantasy Sports, guys, check it out. They got another DFS five-pack shootout contest up today for NBA. We will run through this on the show later. We also got a football one up for the Saturday games. We reviewed this yesterday. Go check it out. Let's talk about NBA. Uh, obviously, we got ourselves a nice, solid Friday night slate to run through. We got ourselves a 10-gamer tonight. Uh, Merry Christmas from us to you guys. You scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Real simple. 200 likes today, and we will do a members-only video free next week. Uh, we'll pick the day where there's a lot of games, so there's a lot to talk about. All we need is 200 thumbs up or likes. Also, anybody interested in becoming a new customer today, the website link is below. Anybody that signs up to be a monthly customer today gets a $10 uh, rebate, and anybody who signs up to be annual gets a $50 rebate. All Both packages include all the sports that are present at that time. Obviously, year-long would be all three sports. All right. Moving into today's picks, guys. So let's just keep it real. This is a really uh, unique slate, I guess, messed up slate, however you want to refer to it, because we kind of saw it with the Pistons the other day when Blake and Drummond were out, but I can't remember a time where we've lost three guys from one team in one game like this. And if Fred Van Vliet's out today, too, like, like everybody on Toronto is forced to play some minutes. And this is not a spot where, like, you're going to the Clippers or you're going to the Lakers or you're going to Utah where you're going against a slow-moving, like, you know, defensive-oriented team. You are legitimately going up against the number one target for DFS, NBA, and that is the Washington Wizards. Like, you could just pick, like, 80 of your buddies. You're going to score 80 on the Wizards. That's how bad they are. Uh, I'm looking at OJ and Anubi, but that's, like, one of, like, seven or eight Toronto guys that are in play today. We will review this whole thing on the members-only video. Sign up for membership today. Get the full thing. Uh, the big thing for me on Ananobi is he was already playing a solid minutes, but his usage rate is going to go through the uh, roof tonight. They don't have a lot of great offensive players. Kyle Lowry's good, but he can't take every single shot. Look for him to take more three-pointers tonight. I think Ananobi's going to be in there for 36-plus minutes tonight because they absolutely need him. He's a decent three-point shooter. He's not a bad rebounder. He can get you a couple assists and steals and stuff like that. His minutes won't skyrocket, but what will skyrocket is his usage and what they need him to do. He's got a great matchup with Washington. Uh, this whole game or whole team is practically in play, and he's just one of like eight guys I want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about literally every single player on the Raptors, on the Raptors roster tonight. It's a cross spot of all cross spots. Someone tweeted last night, I thought this was hilarious. The Raptors roster had a nuclear bomb dropped on them, and now they play the Wizards tomorrow. And that was last night, and that's so true. Like, literally, their roster is depleted. They got three main guys out. Already Fred Van Vliet questionable. Who knows if he plays. Every single person who's going to see minutes for the Raptors tonight is wildly in play. In this spot, I mean, Anadobi said it and forget it. <laughs> I mean, you could go six deep on them tonight. Yeah, I'm not lying. Like I was 
excuse me, the other day when this happened to the Pistons, and it wasn't quite the same, but pretty close because Drummond and Blake are obviously, you know, very good NBA players. And we'll take the Blake argument in another spot, but you get my point. He has a lot of usage. He gets a lot of role. Uh, so it was Bruce Brown, Luke Kennard, Derek Rose, Markeith Morris, Christian Wood. I think I was five deep on him that day. Bruce Brown brought home the bacon, and that's kind of one of the things you can look at to be a little bit different today is maybe try to find some of those Raptors guys that are a little bit lower owned to take a chance on them. I don't know if there's going to be any, but this game and this team deserves the vast majority of your attention. It's just the way things are today. There definitely will be guys lower owned than other guys because that's just, it has to be like that. Uh, But they're all in play, man. Like they're literally all in play. Speaking of guys that will probably legitimately be, you know, chalk a chalk. Uh, your boy Chris over here. I mean, he's legitimately like got 10 X upside today. Like there aren't a lot of guys that if they go 10 times value, you're not surprised. I kind of almost expect it today. I don't know exactly what his minutes are going to be, but there's no Marcus all. There's no Pascal Siakam. They need minutes from bigs. Uh, I just think this is another classic set it and forget it and move on. Yeah, man. I mean, not even 10 X. Like, would you be surprised if he 15 X here? No, because he his game is built for DFS. Now, he's a hack. He's yeah. foul prone. He's raw. Uh, he could easily but, play crappy and get sent to the bench. Maybe they don't go big because Washington has no big players right now. True, but here's the other thing, though. Like, in this matchup, he'd be the best big man on Washington right now. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, seriously, they're so depl- – it's a crazy matchup for this, for this Toronto team tonight. I mean, assuming that Boucher gets the minutes and – that's the only question. There are a couple different bodies that they could use. You know, we're not talking about we'll you know, get into it more members only, but like Ryan A. Hollis Jefferson, all these guys are in play. How many minutes is Boucher going to play? We don't know. But if he plays 15 minutes, he'll walk into cash game value. If he plays like 20 minutes, he'll walk into GPP value. And if he plays more than that, I mean, they're talking about like, you know, potentially 15X in my opinion. So I haven't looked into this yet today, but I would encourage everybody to look to see if they call who they're calling up today. If you're trying to get funky and crazy, I forget who the dude was that played from Washington the other day. I, I couldn't even think of his name because I didn't know much about him. Uh, and he was out there for decent minutes. Like It's something to look at if you're trying to get nuts, if you're trying to differentiate yourself in like big, deep tournaments and stuff like that tonight. But the Raptors are going to be chalk-a-chalk for all the obvious reasons. There's no getting away from this game. This is Washington, not the Magic, not Utah, not the Lakers, not the Bucks. This is Washington. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right, so we couldn't just talk about Raptors, guys. When I messaged you this morning, I said, pick out a, one of your favorites from Toronto and pick out somebody else. I'll do the same thing. Because we could just go through four Toronto guys today, but we want to at least, you know, bring up some other teams. Um, looking at your boy Colin Sexton from the Cleveland Cavaliers today, going up against Memphis. So uh, as far as DFS points go, uh, Memphis is top six against point guards for most points allowed and number one against shooting guards. Sexton's a little bit of that combination guard as uh, Cleveland's got a couple of those guys are kind of those combo guards. Uh, it's a big pace upgrade for the Cleveland Cavaliers who rank near the bottom and Memphis is top 10 in this. They've been closer to the top before. And actually... I think both Cleveland and Memphis, if they were a little bit better, would be higher up the the pace ranks. But they lose out on some possessions because there are a variety of blowouts that they you know that they're going to be exposed to throughout the year. So this is a winnable home game for Cleveland. I like Sexton, a young player in a winnable home game uh, against another not great team in Memphis. He's shown nice upside in three of the last four games. And another thing to like about Colin Sexton, he's basically game script proof. He's going to play 25 plus minutes. If you go through the past games this year, even in massive blowouts, which Cleveland's had plenty of them, he still plays at least 25 minutes, oftentimes 28, 29, 30. There's none of these Popovich shenanigans where all of a sudden like that, he's just out because they choose to differentiate what they're doing for the day. He plays his minutes. He's got a great matchup. He's at home in a winnable game. I'm looking for him to go 30 plus for the fourth time in five games. I think you can look at both starting point guards in this game. They're both in really good spots. I used Sexton last game, and he was really good. Um, uh, he's just rock solid at this price, man, and I don't think a lot of people are going to go here. Uh, he's very scoring reliant, but he's a very good scorer. He gets in the paint with ease. Uh, he's good at the rim, and he's starting to add you know, a couple more boards, assists, and steals, blocks per game. Nothing crazy, but it's why he's been over 30. I like him again tonight. He's definitely a guy I was looking at. Um, I I do think this is a game both teams can win. I think Memphis is better, you know, going forward because they have, like, the stud. Like, John Morant is by far the best player, in my opinion, like, on going forward on either roster. And then 
you know, maybe Jaron Jackson is the next. Who knows? But they are close right now. I'm, I like Sexton, and I'm, I'm all bar tonight. If it wasn't for the fact you literally need to play Toronto guys tonight, I would have some interest in a game stack right here. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not the case. I, I think you're throwing your money away today if you don't grab minimum three, four pieces of Toronto. I'm sure I'm not going to be alone on that one. There's just so much potential upside right there. Uh, so it was a little harder to find guys outside of that game to talk about. Uh, and you mentioned Sexton is scoring reliant, but he scores 18 points a game. So like that is like, I don't know, two thirds of the way to cash value on this price. And yeah, he doesn't do a ton of other things, but he's relatively aggressive when he gets the ball. I'm sure he's feeling relatively confident right now. And I knew you can get on board because he was on your roster a couple nights ago when you had your best night of the year. Uh, and uh, we're feeling real good about him, and he'll be on your good side for a while. Amen. All right, next up, um, guess who's back? Back again. Jokic is back. Tell your friends. Yeah, man, he is back, back, back. Um, I'm not sure people are like no, like know he's all the way back, but he is back. He looks good right now. I mean, he's the first guy I looked at today, even with all the Washington pieces. This is a great spot for Denver. The only thing that worries me here is a blowout if Towns doesn't play because Minnesota is not good. They're not even good with Towns. So without Towns, you know, they're awful. They're really bad without Towns, man. Like one of the worst teams in the league. So Denver could roll here, especially after, you know, they really got going in the second half against Orlando. But the reason they got going is because of Jokic. Moving the ball like we saw last year and years past, he just looks really, really good right now. And he's still too cheap for his upside. What's your take? So there's other reasons to like him. Uh, we'll start with um, the fact that why was he so bad to start the year? All right, dude was fat. Let's just call it like it is. Like he was not ready to play this year. A little fat and happy maybe coming into the season. And like, again, like I said, not just because he's white and you can clearly see the difference, but his body will never be confused with Giannis or LeBron. He's not going to be that guy. He's a little pudgy for an NBA superstar, right? But he was overweight to start the year. He has played himself into game shape, which is probably a like the number one factor to why he's played much better from a DFS perspective lately. He's now got 40 plus in seven straight. And again, 40 would be a disappointment on 9-4, but the fact that his floor is raising is good. He's got no end of a back-to-back -back right here. Also, I, I know you don't like splits as much as I do, but when they go over a period of several years and they're very glaring this season... Like, he averages 10 more DFS points in home games, which makes sense because Denver is the ultimate home court advantage. I am with you on the Towns point, though. The Timberwolves are crap, uh, and they're really crappy without Towns. So if Towns is out tonight, I very likely would pivot off of a pick like this. Uh, I expect Towns to play, but that's just a hunch and nothing else. I would always expect Towns to play because he plays almost all the time, except that he didn't play last game, which has me a little worried. I mean, I don't he know. was questionable the last second, too. Like, I have a lot more faith in him playing. If, like, they had ruled him out, like, in the morning, I'd be like, well, it's not even close. He seemed like he was close, right? Okay, fair enough. I didn't really think about it like that. Um, yeah, and for me, like, Jokic, he just looks engaged right now. Like, can talk all about all you want about, like, his shape, et cetera, et cetera. But he just looks engaged right now. He's back. He's going to be 10-5 soon enough. I'm all bored. I mean, this is a guy that walks into triple doubles out of the center position, which is rare. Uh, he's an yes. excellent passer. Uh, when he's aggressive, I mean, this guy can do 65, 70 DK points like that. And if Towns plays tonight and you think the Timberwolves make it a game, don't be surprised if he's over 55 DK points. And I'm not a Jokic guy. Like, he is not a guy I like to roster that much. Um, so it's kind of like you talk about, like, when I'm on him here, like, that's something to note. Yeah, and I'm a Jokic fan, but uh, he – irked me to start the year because he was not in shape. He didn't look good. Again, he was physically out of shape. Also, mentally, just didn't seem to totally be with it. Being a little bit too passive, he looks more engaged, more aggressive lately. Um, you know, if Towns plays, and we think this is a, at least a semi-competitive game, and you can give me 35 minutes of Jokic, I feel really good about his ability to give you a solid stat line today. And even though, like, his overall points per game this season are not great, he's really good in home games. It's been this way his entire career because Denver is the ultimate home court advantage. Yeah, he's also been, like, really good for four straight, I believe. Yeah, I mean, he's got 40-plus in seven straight. I think he's topped 50 or at least been close to it in four straight. He's got that 70-point game in there. Um, again, look for him to keep it rolling. And no end of a back-to-back -back is really important as well. So there's a lot of buying signs here. And also, because of all the value on Toronto, like, you're going to have money. There's no Harden. There's no Westbrook. There's no Giannis. There's no LeBron. There's no Anthony Davis tonight. You're going to have the money to spend up somewhere. There might be no Towns. Even if there is Towns, he's in not a good spot. I mean... There aren't 
a lot of there's like hardly any studs on this slate at all. Right. And while Jokic, you wouldn't look at 50 TK points off a of nine four and think it's a good GPP play. Because if you just look at the ratio, that's not. It's not typically a good GPP play. But your favorite term is slate dependent. Tonight, slate dependent, that's fine. It very likely is fine. Because I'm not looking at a lot of these guys, 9K plus today, and thinking, oh, crush spot. I don't expect to see Westbrook-type stat lines from most of these players. Yeah, I agree. Um, the only thing about Jokic, and we'll get into members only, is it seems like there's plenty of big men to look at on this slate. You know, normally is. There are the occasional slates where the center is weaker, but, you know, center is usually a strong spot. And that's almost always the argument against the center, isn't it? Yeah, well, especially with all this Toronto value. Like, all of Toronto is in play, but especially their big men, you know? Well, we're lucky there because they don't have any one guy that's just center eligible, yeah. I think, that we're looking at. So that helps out a ton. I don't even know if they have anyone that's just center eligible right now. Yeah, I wouldn't play Marcus All if I were you guys. He's going to get zero minutes and zero points. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, thanks. What's with that? <laughs> well, just no, don't play them. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great day. Again, if we can get 200 thumbs up or likes today, we'll do a free video next week for the customers. Uh, there are the rebates on the memberships today. Um, website link is below. Thanks for watching and have a great Friday. Thanks, guys.